Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Benjamin and I am Christopher and this is the podcast for uh, April 27th uh, 2014 if you're listening to this in the far future or if you have a TARDIS. Um, which we do. Which which we do. Uh, we apologize for the huge hiatus but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this bit Which of I... news was important enough that we um, had to and talk about it. This is brand new news because I haven't heard about it. Uh, announced like yesterday. Okay. See, I was I was in auditions all day yesterday. I I see. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> you just, said it was Star just, Wars related, so I'm a little concerned now. Should I just uh, read the press release? Okay, just say what, you know, where it's from okay. and stuff like that, you know. April 25th, 2014, the legendary Star Wars Expanded Universe turns a new page. Yeah. For over 35 years, the Expanded Universe has enriched the Star Wars fan experience for fans seeking to continue the adventure beyond what is seen on the screen. When he created Star Wars, George Lucas built a universe that sparked the imagination and inspired others to create. He opened up that universe to be a creative space for other people to tell their own tales. This mm -hmm. became the Expanded Universe, or EU, of comics, novels, video games, and more. While Lucasfilm always strived to keep the stories created for the EU consistent with our film and television content, as well as internally consistent, Lucas always made it clear that he was not beholden to the EU. He set the films he created as the canon. This includes the six Star Wars episodes and the many hours of content he developed and produced in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Which I'm also going to assume is also the Thanksgiving slash Christmas special. No. <laughs> Anyways, sorry to continue. <laughs> um, George Lucas has actually said that he hopes that all copies of that are found and burned. <laughs> How did they get Mark Hamill and all of them to do that then? <laughs> Bec okay, okay, I'll tell you why. Because it was to keep the excitement for Star Wars alive. Because if you remember, I don't know if you know about this, but... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, there was a pretty big gap between uh, but, five and uh, six, right? Well, 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 it was actually created between four and five. Oh, okay. So, okay, Kenner, which is basically the precursor to Hasbro, was late in making the action figures. So, uh... when people got their boxes for Christmas, it basically said, Here you go! There is a waiver in here that says you will get your toys eventually. So Lucas was like, uh, Mark, I, I, I really need you to do this. We've got to keep excitement alive so people don't uh, come and crucify all get of us. Or Harrison, uh, Harrison, Harrison, get over. I know you don't like Han Solo, but, but, but get over here now. Hey, hey, hey. He actually <laughs> liked Han Solo at that point. Well, yeah, at that point he did. I mean, this, this is like episode four time. At that point he did, but yeah. Yeah. That's another story. So, so anyway, that's, that's another story. We'll talk about Harrison later. Um, getting back to the press release, uh, the canon includes the six Star Wars episodes and the many hours of content uh, developed and produced in Star Wars The Clone Wars. These stories are the immovable objects of Star Wars history, the characters and events to which all other tales must align. Yes. Now... With an exciting future filled with new cinematic installments of Star Wars, all aspects of Star Wars storytelling moving forward will be connected. Under Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy's direction, the company for the first time ever has formed a story group to oversee and coordinate all Star Wars creative development. We have an unprecedented slate of new Star Wars entertainment on the horizon, said Kennedy. We're set to bring Star Wars back to the big screen and continue the adventure through games, books, comics, and new formats that are just emerging. This future of interconnected storytelling will allow fans to explore this galaxy in deeper ways than ever before. In order to give maximum creative freedom to the filmmakers and also preserve an element of surprise and discovery for the audience, 
Star Wars Episodes 7 through 9 will not tell the same story told in the post-Return of the Jedi Expanded Universe. Well, well, we universe, well, we knew that, but yeah. it's official now. While the universe that readers knew is changing, it is not being discarded. Creators of new Star Wars entertainment have full access to the rich content of the Expanded Universe. For example, elements of the EU are included in Star Wars Rebels. The Inquisitor... The Imperial Security Bureau and Sinar fleet systems are story elements in the new animated series. And <laughs> all these ideas find their origins in the role-playing game material published in the 1980s. You know what would be kind of awesome? What? If Myra Jade made an appearance in uh, Rebels, and maybe if we got like a really, really quick cameo of Thrawn in training. Okay, well, we are going to talk about that. Continuing on, demand for past tales of the expanded universe will keep them in print, presented under the new Legends banner. On the screen, the first new canon to appear will be Star Wars Rebels. In print, the first new books to come from this creative collaboration include novels from Del Rey Books. First to be announced, John Jackson Miller a favorite of ours here, mm -hmm. is writing a novel that precedes the events of Star Wars Rebels and offers insight into a key character's backstory with input directly from executive producers Dave Filoni, Simon Kinberg, and Greg Wiseman. And this is just the beginning of creatively aligned program of Star Wars storytelling created by the collaboration of incredibly talented people united by their love of that galaxy far, far away. Yeah. Uh, who was the article by and what were the, who, were the, who were they aligned with? Well, uh, uh, this was published on StarWars.com. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure we get cre give credit where credit's due. Yes, yes. <laughs> I will just say I, I kind of find it funny how they said what we knew what was going to happen. I mean, I know there's going to be a few fanboys and fangirls out there who are still going to whine and complain and yell. But, you know. I would have loved to have seen Thrawn or Mara on the big screen. But also, we all have to remember that part of this is, this is, oh gosh, how many years now since episode six was filmed? Mark, Mar Mark, Mark Harrison and Carrie are not as young as they used to be. So we can't really continue the Thrawn trilogy, which is no. five years after episode six. I mean, yes, as much years. as we wanted that to happen, that's not going to happen unless we recast it. And then they're still going to gripe and complain. I mean, I would, right. I would gripe more and complain if they changed the cast, recast it, than if they. Just oh my goodness! Continued yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. They're still around. They still want to. I mean, this is kind of like that one, that one Star Trek movie. I saw a little snippet of it, but they had William Shatner come back, and he was only in for like a few minutes, and then like I forgot the bridge exploded and he was dead, but. This is. I feel like this is kind of what it's going to oh, be like. Maybe wait, not necessarily. You were about Captain Kirk. I think it was. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came Star back Trek. and he was in one of the Next Generation movies. Yeah. I. So I think it was Amy was showing that to me when she was still trying to get me to be on the Star Trek bandwagon. I was like, eh. She's like, hey, look at this, William Shatner. I'm like, so he was in one of the originals. Like, so. so? And then the exploded and he died and she was like, no, what happened? And I was just like, I mean. <laughs> Honestly, though, I mean, I wasn't entirely pleased with how they brought Kirk back. I thought it felt cheap. And, and did they really do the character I just, justice? I don't know how they brought him back. I just thought it was like he was there and they're like, hey, why don't you uh, captain for a little while? Because, you know, you were, you're Kirk. I didn't really, I don't know what it was that, you know, but anyways. They, they brought like, him back into the future with some time travel y, wimey, weird stuff. And I just, I didn't think it did the character justice. But we're not talking about Trek here on the Wars. Yeah, no, we're, we're talking not. talking about the Wars. But I was, just, like, I was just relating to that. So people yeah. are like, what do you mean? How are they going to eat? Well, That's probably how it's going to be done. Really? I just hope we see the Falcon and it's going to, I, <laughs> this is going to sound really bad. I hope it's even more of a hunk of junk than it used to be, but still just as capable of doing what it's always done, what she's always done. I would like to see a grizzled old Falcon to go along with a grizzled old Harrison. Isn't isn't Peter Mayhew signed back up yep. too? He is officially yep. he's officially in. I have a feeling we're gonna have a snow white Chewbacca or at least a salt and pepper Chewbacca. Which I, I'm okay with. I would like to see a salt and pepper Chewbacca. I don't want to see a snow white Chewbacca. I think that would look weird. I said Snow White, and I immediately regretted it, but you know what I mean. 
Yeah, it, salt and peppery. He's he's gone. He's gone gray on the edges. <laughs> oh gosh. But okay, but, yeah, that little entourage just zooming around the galaxy. Be kind of interesting if they were still fighting the Empire, because when you stop and think about it, that fleet's still out there. Okay. They well, covered. we have seen a picture that looks like they're in. Um, they're currently shooting in uh, Abu Dhabi, which is a desert place. They're not going mm-hmm. back to Tunisia, as far as so I. They're going back to Tatooine, probably. They're going think, back to Tatooine. I think they're also going back to Hoth, or at least another cold planet too, aren't they? I have no idea. I heard they that they were shooting really up in Greenland or something, where they, you know, Hoth and stuff. So I was like, hmm, maybe they they're might be going back to Hoth, but. We have seen a picture of what looks like an AT-AT foot. Ho, 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 ho! AT-AT and Tatooine, now that'd be fun. That would be awesome. And, and we're just wondering if maybe the Jawas have captured it and are driving around the most epic sand crawler ever. Oh, dear lord, a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, you just see, the, you see this AT-AT head, you're like, ah, hide! And then you realize that the Jawas have tied it to the sand crawler. <laughs> We can capture this. Okay. We are awesome. And then you're just sitting there. You're like, how did they capture this? And then, like a little flashback, the AT-AT is walking through the canyon, and the Jawas just start doing, pulling Ewoks and swinging across and cross wires, and they just make this. But I've, we've got to finish uh, with the press release because um, I. Wait, we're not done with that yet. Well, there's one paragraph that I want to finish reading. Oh, okay. Going forward, Lucasfilm has begun mapping out the narrative future of Star Wars storytelling that will appear on film and television and in other media so that all projects will benefit from real-time collaboration and alignment. The future Star Wars novels from Disney Publishing Worldwide and Delray Books will (laughs) now be part of the official Star Wars canon as reflected on upcoming TV and movie screens. Wait, wait, wait. I, wait. Is that... The, 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 you, did you just say that Disney writers' stuff is going to be considered canon now? Wait, what are you asking? I might have misheard that. Are you saying that the, that the Disney publishers' books are, are going to be considered canon? Um, what, um... What do you mean by Disney books are going to be considered canon? Uh, you said there were some books that were going to be released by Disney Publishing. Disney Publishing and Del Rey Books is collaboration. Okay. Collaboration. I was sitting there thinking, wait, why are the Disney books going to be canon, but none of the other stuff is okay? Okay. okay. No, that makes sense. No, no, no. See, the thing about it is, is that the past EU... Yeah, they basically... didn't know what was coming. Now everyone else knows what's coming. Quote, unquote. Well, so, from these two press releases from, you know, Lucasfilm, I understand, and I think a lot of people understand, that all the old EU has, like, the last remnants of the old Republic been completely swept away. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, (laughs) trash. The thing about that is, is that... Um... We are getting new books, and these books will now be carefully constructed to be part of the Star Wars canon. But I don't think that we can take any of the other previous Star Wars EU material to be canon anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, the thing about that is, is that Disney isn't just ignoring their existence. Disney is still keeping all the old EU in print. However, labeled as Star Wars Legends, which I consider to be, like, basically Star Wars Infinities, but serious. Mm Mm-hmm. Was it Star Wars Infinities, that interesting, like, three-part comic series where they rewrote, like, what would have happened if this event changed in episode four, five, and six? Yeah, exactly. And also the the humorous Tag and Bink comics, those were uh, part of the Infinities line. (laughs) Those are hilarious. See, the thing about this is, is that, yes, um, all the old EU is no longer canon. Does that mean that you can no longer enjoy it? No, 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 no. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I am still keeping the Thrawn books 
on my shelf. I mean, if I had the Thrawn books, they would be on my shelf. You should get the Thrawn books. I just haven't found them at a bookstore yet. I don't, uh, I don't have maybe. time to go to stores, and when I do, it's usually to get something, like when I'm going to go get food or a drink or orcs. It's usually that. Or, or if I see something that catches my eye, like a comic or something like that, I'm like, oh, yeah. But usually I go to hobby stores, and if they have books there, they're usually overpriced. So when I see a Thrawn book or something, it's like 12 or 13 bucks. It's like, yeah, I'm not paying that much. <laughs> wow, that's really overpriced. You should be able to get them for like 7 or 8 bucks. Well, I'm 7 or 8 bucks is still a little high in my book. I'm going to have to get you these this trilogy. Anyway, okay, so going forward, everything is going to be canon. Games, yeah. novels comic books, TV, movies, all canon. All is going to fit together because they have people making sure that the continuity talks to each other. This, mm -hmm. honestly, is something that EU fans have been wanting for a long time. And honestly, with the advent of the Clone Wars, and you remember the Karen Travesty. Yep. There was no way that all the EU could possibly be made to work with the star the current the six star wars films or the upcoming sequel trilogy there was just no way lucas had his ideas for years eu had their ideas for years and there was no way that the two could meet but everything going forward is going to be canon and they didn't just tell us Oh, uh, you know, all the EU, that's not canon anymore. They actually gave us four very exciting announcements for completely official novels. The first, our very first official canon novel, which those words tell me, yeah, all the EU is not gone, but no longer canon. Yeah. So Solidly in the legendary dark times between episodes three and four, A New Dawn will introduce readers to two main characters from the upcoming Star Wars Rebels animated series, Kanan Jarrus and yeah. Hera Syndulla. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and will feature jacket art by Doug Wheatley as well as a foreword by Dave Filoni, etc., 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 Hey, uh, do you still have? Do you have, remember that uh, they were talking about the the blah, blah blah words can't talk right now? Do you know what's going on with that Darth Maul comic series that was coming out, like explaining what happened after Palpatine caught him again? Do you know? If they heard anything of that? Whether or not that's going to be canon? Well, not not. I don't care if that's canon. I just want to read it. <laughs> oh, it's coming out. Yes, I because I it's I heard out. about it all the time. Then it disappeared, and I was no, like, no, no, okay, no, no, no. well, it never disappeared. It is coming out. It is on the Dark Horse website. It is on the Things from Another World web website. It's available for pre order. It's coming out, and I will get it. No, oh, I'm gonna get it too. <laughs> oh, did, did I tell you about? I found the. Uh, I can't remember the name of the Jedi. Oh crap. Uh, That's really helpful. That's really helpful. The white-haired guy in the really dark, helpful. dark times, dark times, dark times. Dark times, him? Mm-hmm. I can't remember his name. Crap. Uh, but I remember you gave me the series, and then it right. ended, and then I never just, I never continued it because I didn't have time or knew what to look for because I okay. forget names, as we can obviously tell from white-haired Jedi. Yeah, but, I can't remember his name either. I just know him as the, as the, as the uh, Dark Horse Dark Times Jedi. He's, he's, really, a, bit, he's a, bit, a really cool character. He's, he just has a complicated name, which is hard for me to remember. Right. He's a really interesting character because he's kind of gone a bit brutal and is trying he, to survive. A bit brutal? He's just surviving, which is really <laughs> brutal. But I don't remember if I told you this. I actually found the continuation of the series. Oh, yeah. In, oh, yeah. In the uh, discounted box at Sweet. the comic book store that I like to go to. I need to go back there and finish getting, like, get the other four comics because I got like the prelude which is called Blue Harvest. Yes, Blue Harvest. <laughs> and then um, they've the done uh, two or three other kind of like five issue story arcs following him. 
Mm. Actually, no, they've done a few others because Crook, you remember the big... Oh, Crook, yes. You remember Crook, Crook the is, Jedi? Yeah, they've done the one following best. him. That's called a Dark Times Fire Carrier. Look up that one. Oh, I read that one. I read that one. Yay! Crook was, was my favorite, one of my favorite See, Jedi. See, but, he, actually, he's still in my top five. Crook wait, is still wait, in my have you read Fire Carrier? Because that is recent. Wait, I mean, I, I remember reading a bunch of Crook stuff. It might not have been Fire right. Carrier. This this is recent. This is like after Blue Harvest. Oh, uh, okay. So it's it's really new. It's in my well, opinion. yeah, really new. Okay, continuing on because we've got three other official novels to get through, and I think you're going to be really interested in this second one. Okay, Sabine. No, in our oh. second upcoming novel, created in collaboration with the Lucasfilm Story Group, best-selling Star Wars veteran James Lucino gives. Tarkin, the Darth Plagueis treatment, bringing a legendary character from A New Hope to full, fascinating life. Coming Ooh. November 4th, 2014. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. And completely canon, baby. I wonder if Tarkin's going to show up in Rebels. I'm sure he is. Oh, you know it. He showed up in Episode 3. Of course he's going to be in Rebels. In Episode 3? Yeah. You see him... Uh, at the at the bridge, when uh, Vader oh, yeah, 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 yeah. looking at the Death Star, that's Tarkin yeah, yeah. who turns and walks away. That's and they right. Actually very specifically made like a latex mask for the guy, so he looked like Tarkin. Mm hmm. Yeah, I remember that now. I was like, uh, now I feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, book number three, Star Wars, Heir to the Jedi, by Kevin Hearn, which is, or, who is an author I haven't read before. I haven't heard of him. A thrilling new adventure set between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, and, for the first time ever, written entirely from Luke Skywalker's first-person point of view. Coming January 2015. See, I'm not a big fan of first-person view stuff, but, you know. But it's it's Luke, so we'll have to give it a chance. I'll give it a chance. Yeah. I mean, one of the books I gave a ch like, I've read a lot of first-person stuff, and I never really cared for it, but I read I read a series that was first-person, and I actually ended up liking it. I want to continue finishing okay. the series. It's not Star Wars or anything. It's a All right. Seventh Daughter or something like that. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool series. Oh, by the way, um, Star Wars A New Dawn is coming on September 2nd this year. Tarkin is coming on November 4th this year. Heir to the Jedi is coming on January. And the fourth and final novel announced um, is coming in March. It's Star Wars Lords of the Sith by Paul S. Kemp. <laughs> when the Emperor and his notorious apprentice, Darth Vader, find themselves stranded in the middle of insurgent action on an inhospitable planet, Whoa, they must what? rely solely on each other, the Force, and their awesome martial skills to prevail. That's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. That's going to be interesting. Okay, so you seem to be taking the news that the EU is no longer canon extremely well. I... <laughs> we're not going to talk... <laughs> Being human's finale kind of hardened me. I, I can almost handle anything now. <laughs> 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 but, no, no, it's, it's kind of twisting me up inside, but, you know, it's... It's... We're getting Star Wars movie. We're getting three new Star Wars movies out of it. And as long as Disney doesn't bleep up, uh, I'll be happy for it. Let's put it this way: Disney does a good job. I'll be happy that we still technically have them, even though they're not real. If Disney messes up, I'm just going to pretend that Disney movies didn't happen and that the expanded universe is still real. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'll be that guy. <laughs> hey, uh, you know that. Uh, Karen Skywalker and no, no, it's Ben Skywalker. Ben Skywalker's their child. Luke, <laughs> Luke didn't marry this crazy woman, Mandalorian girl. I even though I love Mandalorians, no, he didn't, and he didn't have two daughters. He had a single son with Mara Jade. <laughs> I love Mara, but you know, I I have to say I can enjoy them both separately. No, no, you can. No, yeah, no. And and 
I have spent hundreds of dollars on Star Wars comics, and that does not diminish how great they are. It oh, just means that they aren't part of the Star Wars universe that we see on the screen. They yeah. still exist. They're just in our legends. They're universe. in our legends. They're legends in our hearts and our memories. Thrawn will always be one of my favorite villains. I love whenever they introduce a villain or a character. See, I, okay, I've been slightly Travisized, but I'm not anti-Jedi. I, I do love non-Force sensitive characters that can outsmart Force sensitive characters. I no, mean, it's, see, it gives see, everyone a sense of humanity. You okay, know. but see, Travis isn't about loving non-Force sensitive characters. Han freaking Solo. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! 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 What Travis I mean, is about is can, hating can, Jedi can, and throwing a fit when somebody tells can her, ask, "No, you can't can do ask that." Christopher. I used to be a hardcore Rebel Jedi fan. And, like, I'd take all the quests, I'd get the Rebel Alliance and Jedi quizzes, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you go and look at my personal Facebook page, you'll see a lot of the stuff I'm getting is Empire, still light side, and Han Solo, you know, non-Force sensitive characters. I, I kind of like, I'm slowly coming off my fanboy cloud. It's taken how many years? But, you know. Many. Many. Yeah. I, and honestly... I think I think both of us have mellowed a little bit in terms oh, of our yeah, yeah, we have. clouds. And I honestly I think it's you know, I'm better. I'm so glad that. that we still have Caragon. Caragon's still floating around there, but he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's de- Vor Vor. I, I mean, I'm not going to say Vor's dead. Vor is just a really cool character which has now became an NPC. Yeah, have we yeah. ever told them about our Star Wars kind of story ish role play um, thingy? We- I don't know if we have, but it looks like we only have a couple minutes left, so we should probably wrap this up and save that for another episode. Yeah. So, all in all, I'm okay with uh, the Star Wars EU, you know, not being canon anymore. Doesn't mean that I won't, you know, still Uh, have my Force Unleashed games. Doesn't mean I'm not going to have... You know, the Thrawn trilogy. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to read and really enjoy... Um, you know, uh, Sam Witwer gets called to act in the new Star Wars trilogy. Just saying. Oh, you know that he'll him and, Sa- him and Sam Huntington. That would be awesome if Sam Huntington yeah. appeared. <laughs> hey, look, it's Sam and a- it's, it's it's Aiden and Josh again. No, you don't realize how how the biggest Star Wars fans of those guys are. They're not Aiden yeah. and Josh up there. <laughs> They're X and Y. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, but we're going to wrap this up. So yeah. I am going to enjoy uh, my Expanded Universe, Star Wars Legends, whether it's canon or not. Just like I enjoy books and movies where, where they do a movie adaptation of the book. It's different. Doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it if it's a good story. Yep, and same here, same here. Unless, All right. they, unless they completely mess it up, then I will well, even and hate Disney forever. See, Which I kind of already slightly do. Okay, wait, 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 but here's the thing. Don't hate them because they did it different from the EU. Hate them if they do a bad story. No, 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 that's what I mean. That is what is unforgivable. There's a reason that I don't like the Hobbit films, and it is not because they are different from the books. It is because I think they have done a cartoonish, silly, unbelievable, unrealistic, bad story chocked full of slapstick humor, comedy violence... And, you know, fan pandering. Yeah. Well, anyways, we'd probably better wrap this up. So, um, you know, uh, check out our Facebook page uh, and you can see whatever we post up there. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the podcast, hyphen between Poe and Cass. Check Poe out Cass, our YouTube channel. YouTube. Um, iTunes. iTunes if, if is coming in the, in the, in the, in the Tardisy future. Tardisy future where probably timey wimey we don't know when it's coming yeah. but uh if you happen to get a tardis and you get to hear it just shoot us an email at the podcast 2119 at gmail.com and if you do happen to have a tardis uh let us know how we did but yeah don't, no no spoilers no spoilers and don't break the space-time continuum don't don't make any black holes we we kind of Anyways, I'm Benjamin. <laughs> and I'm Christopher. And this and is the podcast. And I think we're done. <laughs> yep. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.